1884, one of history's greatest automotive pioneers was born. In the town of Mühlberg, Germany, Carl Friedrich Michael Valent was born to the son of a locomotive driver. Carl grew up impoverished, but never gave up on his dreams for a better life. He became a mechanic, and from that day on, he would achieve incredible things. In 1883, the other half to Carl's future was born. Gottlieb Wilhelm Daimler was born in Skorndorf, Germany. He also came from humble beginnings, as he was the son of a baker. Daimler was incredibly smart from a young age, and he became interested in engineering at the age of 13. His curiosity would lead him to discover and create some incredible things. While these two boys may have been born in different towns, their stories would be intertwined forever. This is the story of the rise of Mercedes-Benz and the two men behind its creation. Carl Friedrich Michael's life was turbulent as a child. His parents, Josephine Violent and Johann George Benz, were poor and could not provide much to their child. Michael was only two years old when his father tragically passed away of pneumonia. After his father's death, Carl Friedrich Michael's name was changed to Carl Friedrich Benz. As a young boy, Benz's mother fought for him to have an education and made sure that he went to school. Benz was a great student, and at nine, he was already studying science at an advanced level. Benz's initial dream was to be a locksmith. He had a fascination for how they worked and saw it being a good career path for him. When he was a little older, he decided to change career aspirations and follow in his father's footsteps of becoming an engineer. His father was a big hero for him, and it meant a lot for Benz to finish what his father couldn't. At only 15, he passed the entrance exam to study mechanical engineering for the Karlsruhe Polytechnical School. He was an excellent student there and graduated at 19 with top marks. After graduation, Benz went right to work. He initially had some misfortunes when he was working for August Ritter for his iron foundry and mechanical workshop, but he eventually landed on his feet. He was busy developing new engines in the small factory that he owned. He created a petrol two-stroke engine and was able to get a patent for it in 1880. He realized that he needed to be getting patents for all of his designs, so he went on to patent the speed regulation system, the ignition using sparks with batter, the spark plug, the carburetor, the clutch, the gear shift, and the water radiator. At such a young age, Benz was already revolutionizing automotive mechanics. He also was creating patents and protecting his intellectual property, something that was very smart for a boy of his age. Like Benz, Gottlieb Wilhelm Daimler also came from humble beginnings. His father, Johannes Daimler, was a baker. As a child, Daimler excelled in school. He had a brilliant mind and endless curiosity. After completing his secondary school, Daimler wanted to become a gunsmith. He trained under master gunsmith Hermann Rathel and passed his examinations with exceptional marks. Even though he could have easily made a name for himself as a gunsmith, Daimler saw more for himself. He left the job behind and took into mechanical engineering, which was his dream career to have as a boy. He excelled in education, and while studying, he joined a workforce and began making railway locomotives. He was promoted to foreman at the age of 22. After Daimler completed his education, he went to work designing tools, mills, and turbines for Maschinenfabrik Daniel Straub and Geislingen Anders Steich. There were a lot of internal issues with how the company was run, and Daimler quit. Daimler had a resentment for company investors controlling a company and taking away decisions from the investors. It was around this time that he met a 15-year-old orphan named Wilhelm Maybach. In 1872, Daimler became factory manager for gas motor and fabrik Deutz and brought along Maybach to be chief designer. Once again, the company's internal issues frustrated Daimler, and he and Maybach once again moved to find new jobs working for Nicholas Otto in Cologne. A pivotal moment in the life of Benz happened when he stumbled into a bicycle repair shop in Mannheim. The shop was owned by Max Rose and Friedrich Wilhelm. In 1883, this trio joined forces and created their new company, Benz & C. It was at this job that Benz was able to develop an idea that he had for a long time, a horseless carriage. The carriage would have a four-stroke engine, a coil ignition, an evaporating cooling system, and wire wheels. In 1885, he completed his machine and called it the Benz Patent Motor Wagon. While the initial model had some issues, he was able to make some changes and adapt the carriage. He eventually began selling the vehicle, which made history as the first commercially available automobile in history. This also made Benz & C the first automobile company to sell a commercial vehicle. The vehicle was a success, and he made three models of the car, each one better than the last. 
In 1888, Benz's wife, Bertha Benz, set out to make history again when she took the first ever long-distance automobile trip in her husband's Model 3 motor wagon. The vehicle had two gears, which made it difficult for climbing hills. But regardless, Bertha finished the trip. Along the way, she invented brake pads and fixed many mechanical issues. This was a huge feat for the company, and Bertha's trek is still celebrated and remembered today with a festival and a dedicated memorial route. This trek spread the Benz name throughout Germany and helped generate positive press for the company. Independently from Benz, Daimler produced his own automobile in 1886. Both vehicles were made in Germany, only 60 miles apart from each other. Daimler was paying attention to the work Benz was accomplishing, and when Benz premiered the motor wagon, Daimler knew that his engine could also drive a vehicle. Daimler and Maybach made a plan to secretly bring an American model coach into their house. They told their neighbors it was a gift for Daimler's wife. Instead, they installed their newest invention, the grandfather clock engine, into the stagecoach. Their plan succeeded, and their creation became the first four-wheeled vehicle to reach 10 miles per hour. The team was thrilled that their automobile worked. They went on to use this engine to power boats, streetcars, and even an air balloon. In 1889, the duo released the Stahlrad Wagon, which was the first vehicle not built from a horse carriage. While Daimler was impressing everyone with his designs and technical ability, his personal beliefs on how to run a business sometimes got in his way. He had seen what greedy stockholders had done to his colleagues like Henry Ford, Ransom Olds, August Horsch, and Carl Benz, and he continued to resist becoming an incorporation or stock company. His fears were justified because exactly that ended up happening to him when his company incorporated. When the stockholders took control, Daimler disagreed, panicked, and then resigned. He once again was left to start over and produce cars on his own. It was around this time that Daimler sued Benz for violating his patent for a hot tube ignition. He won the case, and Benz had to pay him royalties. This was one of the only known interactions between the pair in their lives. In 1900, Gottlieb Daimler passed away after suffering from heart problems. His death was a huge hit for the automobile industry. In his life, he was a pioneer for the industry, and he is considered the creator of the motorcycle. After his death, his name continued to grow under the direction of his friend Maybach. After his death, Maybach went on to create a vehicle and name the new engine the Daimler Mercedes in memory of his friend. Demand for Benz and his static internal combustion engines was high. He was able to expand his factory and build a new location as well. He was on top of the world, and in 1899 he became the largest automobile company in the world. He was making new models, such as the inexpensive Victoria and the Velocipede, which was the first mass-produced car ever made. His company had made a huge name, and in 1903, Benz announced his retirement from design and management. Soon after this announcement, things became more difficult for the company when the economy in Germany began to fail. Rapid inflation and a loss of their consumer base hit German car manufacturers very hard. In 1923, Benz made only 1,382 units, and DMG, Maybach and Daimler's company, produced only 1,020. A decision was made to create a deal between Benz and DMG to team up in order to reduce costs. This deal was what merged the Daimler-Benz company, which would call their joint vehicles Mercedes-Benz. The merger worked, and in 1927, they tripled their numbers and sold 7,918 units. Carl Benz would remain involved in the company until his death in 1929. Before he passed, he created a new logo, a three-point star in honor of Daimler's motto, engines for land, air, and water. A merger between two pioneers on auto engineering was one that would change the world forever. Today, Mercedes-Benz remains a huge name in the automobile industry, and its brand is synonymous with class, quality, and world-class engineering. While Benz and Daimler never had a connection while living, their posthumous partnership was one that changed the world. At the same time and in the same country, two young men with a passion for mechanics and engineering were working hard towards the same goal, success in the industry and inventing something truly special. These two men would find that on their own, but when paired together, their names and ideas would solidify Mercedes-Benz as one of the oldest and greatest car companies of all time.